Hello friends. In the previous section, we talked about the force and the moment. So in this section, we will further move into the basics of the Stokes law analysis. So we haven't yet uh, gone into the steps for the Stokes law analysis. We are still learning the prerequisite things for learning the Stokes law analysis. So here in this section, we will learn about the loads and we'll learn about the Stokes law members and also we will learn about different kinds of supports. So what are they and how they influence our structures? We'll talk about them one by one. So first we'll talk about the load. In the previous section we talked about the force. Uh, so load is also the force. So the loads can be of the various kinds depending upon how you are talking about. So based on the nature of the load, so based on the nature, if we classify the loads, so based on the nature, if we classify the load, the first load that we see is the dead load. Dead load. Now let's see, let's assume that we got two walls over here. So this is our ground and we got, this is our first wall and we got the second wall over here. And on this wall, we have placed a, a, let's say, a wooden log like this. So this is the wooden log and these two are the brick walls or the stone walls. So you can see that, uh, you can see that this wooden log has got its own weight that acts downward due to the gravity. So this load of this wooden wall is known as the dead load. The self weight of this wooden log is the dead load. When you have to design this uh, wooden log, so you need to take this load also into account, the self weight. Not only the loads acting on this uh, structure, the external forces that are acting on this structure, you have to take the self weight of that structure as well. So uh, next thing that we see is the live load. So live load are the temporary loads that act on the structural member or the structure that we are going to build. So let's say that now you are standing on this uh, wooden log. So in this case, you become the live load. The self weight of this structure is acting downward. Your weight is also acting downward. So this is the dead load and this your load also that is acting downward is the live load. So live load doesn't mean the loads that are moving. For example, in your room, so in your room, you see, you see the slab, right? The slab where you are resting right now. So that slab is the dead load. The walls that you see, they are also the dead load. The ceiling that you see, that is also the dead load. Okay. And other things that you see, for example, your bed, your table or your chair, the ceiling fan, they are the live loads because they can be moved from one place to another place and they are temporary. The next load that we talk about is the, let's say wind load. So we got other loads as well, wind load. Okay. The wind doesn't seem to be very much troubling to you while you're walking and the wind is blowing. So it might not exert a lot of force on you. But if you see a big building, a high rise building with a large surface area. So let's say the building with like a uh, 20 to 30 meters high or let's say 50, 100 meter high building and with a huge surface area. So in the windy regions, the force due to the wind, the force acting on uh, this building due to wind, it might be high. So you need to consider the wind load as well in the windy areas in order to design your building. So the wind load is simply the load due to the wind and which you take into the consideration. So there are various formulas to calculate the wind load. So using those formulas, you can find the wind load that is acting on a building. So uh, the next load that we uh, see is the, see is the earthquake load. The load due to the earthquake is known as the earthquake load and it is very important to determine this earthquake load accurately in order to design your building or in order to design your structure. 
to calculate the earthquake load we have got various formulas and using those formulas just like the wind load we can determine the earthquake load so you can see that dead load will act in the vertical direction the live load will also act in the vertical direction due to the gravity the wind load and the earthquake load however act in the horizontal direction so you can see that when the ground vibrates like this so when the ground shakes the earthquake load is induced so the earthquake load is also the horizontal load and also the wind load is the horizontal load or we say these two loads are the lateral loads lateral loads so whenever we design our structure we don't design our structure for both the loads at once because in doing that the structure becomes uneconomical so what we do is that we design the structure for either one of these uh, two parameters or two loads so if we design our building for the wind load so suppose that our structure is in the very windy area let's say it is in the higher hills uh, where the wind blows very high or other places in that case we design our structure for the wind load and we assume that when there is wind blowing the chances of occurring the earthquake at the same time is kind of rare that is why we design for only one of these two loads so uh, the places where the earthquake intensity is quite high and just like the nepal where i live so nepal is a country of himalayas so uh, it is a very uh, high earthquake prone area uh, the chances of occurring earthquake load in nepal are quite high that is why we design our structure for the earthquake and we assume that the earthquake and the wind they don't occur at the same time so next load that we need to see is also the snow load snow load so if this is your roof and you live in the places where there is heavy snowfall snowfall of like 3 to 4 feet high or 1 2 feet high in that case there will be a layer of snow in the entire this uh, roof portion so this entire portion will be covered with the snow so taking the snow in a hand and making it ball so it might feel very light but you know taking this much area of this snow and this thickness 1 feet 2 feet and 3 feet high uh, snow so this roof needs to be designed for taking this snow load as well similarly we got other loads as well so other are temperature loads so due to the variation of the temperature we got the vibration loads so due to the vibrations induced in the building suppose that uh, this building is uh, near to the highway where the heavy vehicles run in that case the you know vibration due to the moving of these vehicles uh, is induced into the building so we need to design this building for this vibration load as well so this is the classification based on the nature of the load and uh, next let us see the classification of the load based on how it is applied on a structure